morning students so today we are going to discuss about trypanosoma gambiensis okay so if we look at its taxonomy so it belongs to phylum protozoa subphylum sarcomestigophora superclass mastigophora और फ्लेजिलेटा भी हम बोल सकते हैं ठीक है देन क्लास जू मास्टिकोफोरा ऑर्डर काइनेटो Plastida, then genus Spano Soma. So it is the classification of uh, Trypanosoma gambiensis. So this uh, Trypanosoma gambiensis cause a disease that is called African sleeping sickness african sleeping sickness which is a fatal human disease and is caused by this trypanosoma gambiensis so this if we look about the distribution the distribution of this trypanosoma gambiensis is it is found in Central Africa, West Africa, from Gambia to Congo. Okay, so these are the some places found uh, present in Africa, Congo, and Uganda. So these uh, trypanosoma, these protozoa are mainly commonly found near low marshy lands, low marshy lands near uh, rivers and lakes and uh, this is because in these places its vector is found or we can say the insect which carries this particular disease that is the gambiensis is found that is the testifly <coughs> or testifly glossina palparis so ये इस जगह पे इसलिए पाया जाता है क्योंकि यहाँ पे इस इन जगहों पे इसलिए इसका infection ज़्यादा है क्योंकि वहाँ पे इसका जो vector है that is the thistle fly वो पाया जाता है that's why so this thistle fly is a blood sucking insect which carries or which act as a secondary host for this trypanosoma and this trypanosoma is digenetic it completes its life cycle into two hosts and uh, an important fact uh, important feature of this trypanosoma it does not show any uh, sexual reproduction it reproduces by asexual reproduction that is by binary fission so uh, trypanosoma gambiensis live as a digenetic endoparasite in the blood so cecifili is the secondary host and human is the 
primary host sessifly also act as a vector uh, because it transfer the uh, protozoa that endoparasite from a human to another human okay so it also act as a vector so uh, this uh, trypanosoma gambiensis live as a genet diagenetic uh, endoparasite in the blood in the blood lymph lymph nodes so it's its habitat lymph nodes spleen or cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid of human human being and in the intestine of blood sucking say fly that is the glossina palpalis uh, pal okay so uh, if you look at the morphology of this insect so it's a unicellular microscopic cylinder elongated colorless leaf like protozoa unicellular microscopic cylinder elongated colorless leaf like protozoa so its body measure that is 10 uh, micrometer to 40 micrometer in length and if we measure the uh, width then it's 1 micrometer to 5 micrometer in breadth okay so the interior body of the uh, protozoa is pointed and the posterior end is blunt if i draw a diagram here so it's like this So the anterior end of the body is pointed, pointed and the posterior end is blunt. The body is covered by tough but elastic pellicel. So this is the pellicel which is composed of numerous microtubules. Pellicel is followed by cytoplasm which is differentiated into outer ectoplasm clear ectoplasm and inner granular endoplasm so this clear part is the ectoplasm and the granular part is the endo Plasm and uh, the endoplasm contains single nucleus, single mitochondria, single Golgi apparatus. Single nucleus, single mitochondria, and single Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. It lacks contractile vacuole and food vacuole however contains many scattered greenish refractile bodies called volutine granules. These granules contain glycogen and phosphates and represent reserve food material of trypanosoma. If we can draw here, so these are the volutine or we can simply call them reserve food granules 
and if I draw the flagellum so it's like this okay so it does not contain any contractile vacuole but it contains a volutine granule which contains the glycogen and phosphate molecules which represent the reserve food material of trypanosoma nucleus is single oval vascular and is located in the middle of its body it contains a large endosome karyosome or nucleolus you can see okay uh, nucleolus as nucleus is concerned with the nutritive function of the parasite it is often called trophic nucleus because it is mainly concerned with the nutritive function that's why it also called trophic nucleus so mitochondria is single elongated giant and extends from the anterior to the posterior end of the body it is uh, called chondriome a conspicuous mass of dna called kinetoplast plus is embedded in the mitochondria just near the gullet so you can clearly see in this diagram so this is the elongated single mitochondria which is elongated from the anterior to the posterior end and this type of my mitochondria is called chondrium okay so next uh, a conspicuous mass of dna called kinetoplast you can see here kinetoplast is embedded in the mitochondrion just near the gullet so this is the gullet part so you can see uh, the kinetoplast embedded in the single mitochondrion then a small pocket like depression on one side near the posterior end so the posterior end is uh, always blunt so uh, a pocket like depression is present on the uh, posterior end which represents the gullet and reservoir okay so trypanosoma being monoflagellate contains single long flagellum which originates from the basal body which is located close to the gullet near the posterior end of the body so you can see a single flagellum this is the flagellum okay so this is a single long flagellum which originates from the basal body near the gullet or the posterior end of the body okay so uh, it is a mono flagellate so can you can see clearly in the diagram then it consists of exoneme comprising microtubules nine in nine plus two arrangement so this uh, flagellum consists exoneme which consists microtubules in nine plus two arrangement that is nine uh, microtubules outside and in the inner part there is two microtubule arrange and bound it by the plasma membrane so it is not free but, but it is uh, bounded with the uh, plasma membrane okay so at on the uh, only on the uh, anterior end it is free so flagellum extends forward along the body to project beyond its front end in the form of free flagellum all along its length of the body it is connected to the body by a fin like undulating membrane formed of cytoplasm and folded pellicel okay so you can see here so it is not free and it's only free on the anterior end the flagellum is free on the anterior end but uh, the rest of the body it is connected with a undulating membrane which is made up of the cytoplasm and the uh, pellicel okay and uh, the undulating membrane is supposed to be an adaptive structure for locomotion in the viscous environment so this is a parasitic adaptation of this particular trypanosoma so it can uh, easily move in the viscous environment that is the blood or lymph where it lives okay so this is the 
morphology of the trypanosoma so trypanosoma uh, shows a polymorphism that is it shows polymorphic form it uh, have different forms uh, uh, you can see in this diagram that is there are four different forms of this particular uh, trypanosoma that is amestigot tri tripomestigot promestigot and epimestigot so this particular trypanosoma can enter into any of the following forms uh, so that uh, it can escape from the host immune system so we will discuss one by one so first we will discuss about the mst goat form so its older name is uh, leishmanial stage so it it is represented by round form you can see in this diagram this is the mst goat it is represented by round form with without any external uh, flagellum as in the genus Leishmania so you can see there is no any flagellum extended from the body so it is without uh, any flagella so it is a round or oval in structure uh, which has reduced flagellum and the flagellum is present inside the cytoplasm basal body and kinetoplast are situated in the anterior part of the body so the basal body is not shown here but the basal body and the uh, kinetoplasts are present in the anterior part of the body then second is the promestigot so it is old name is leptomonad stage it is represented by an elongated form uh, with the kinetoplast lying to the anterior and uh, anterior to the nucleus anterior to the nucleus anterior to the nucleus by an elongated form with the kinetoplast lying to the anterior to the nucleus that is anti-nuclear kinetoplast the flagellum arises near the kinetoplast so there is the kinetoplast uh, and uh, the flagellum arises from this kinetoplast uh, and emerges from the anterior end of the body as in the genus leptomonas and others so in it the flagellum is short unattached and free then next is the epimestigot its old name is uh, cithridal stage so it is uh, presented by an elongated form which is it is much more elongated than the promesticated form and the kinetoplast is lying anterior uh, and close to the nucleus so there you can see the uh, kind of core is very near to the nucleus and to the anterior side of the nucleus but in the promestic the uh, nu the kinetoplast is far away from the nucleus at present in the anterior side of anterior side okay and along with that the flagellum arising near it emerges from the side of the body to run along a short undulating membrane so the uh, flagellum is arising near the kinetoplast is also having the short undulating membrane it it doesn't the promestigot doesn't have any undulating membrane it has a free flagellum but in epimestigot it has an undulating uh, flagellum okay short undulating flagellum then uh, then the final is the tropomestigot so this term is not it is the old name for trypanosoma stage so uh, this term is not derived from the genus trypanosoma it is represented by elongated form with post nuclear kinetoplast situated at the posterior end now the kinetoplast is present at the posterior end here in these two the kinetoplast is present at the anterior side but now it is present on the posterior side so the flagellum arises near the kinetoplast emerge and emerges from side of the body to run along the undulating membrane as in genus trypanosoma so you can see the uh, flagellum is arising on the anterior uh, posterior side and uh, it is uh, having the undulating membrane and having a long undulating membrane okay so it has also undulating membrane but it is a short undulating membrane but you can see the undulating uh, the flagellum is long and it is present uh, as a, uh, side to side of the body and having a long undulating membrane out of these four trypano uh, tripomestigot is the adult stage out of this four the tripomestigate is the 
adult stage while other form represent developmental stages which are formed during the part of its life cycle in the invertebrate host so this is the adult stage uh, rest of the three are the developmental stage which, which we can see during the uh, life cycle of the trypanosoma gambiensis okay now reproduction so this is no sexual there is no sexual reproduction have uh, as i have already told about that so there is no sexual reproduction no sexual reproduction in trypanosoma it reproduces by asexual reproduction and mainly if we mention the asexual type of reproduction that is longitudinal binary fission so it divides by longitudinal binary fission so it doesn't have any sexual uh, reproduction so it occurs in all forms found in both hosts that is human being and cecifly during binary fission the basal body that is the blepharoplast uh, divides first then subsequently the gynetoplast last and nucleus and finally the cytoplasm okay then usually one daughter individual retains the old flagellum and undulating membrane and the other daughter develops a new one which grows out before the complete separation of the daughters so first of all what will happen in the time of the binary fission बेसल बॉडी है जिसको हम क्या बोलते हैं बिलफेरोप्लास्ट बोलते हैं तो वो पहले डिवाइड होगा देन उसके बाद उसके बाद काइटोप्लास्ट होगा देन उसके बाद न्यूक्लियस होगा और फाइनली साइटोप्लाज्म डिवाइड होगा ठीक है देन जो डॉटर सेल है ठीक है जो उन दोनों में से एक डॉटर सेल होगा उसके पास जो ओल्ड फ्लैजिलम है और जो ओल्ड एंडुलेटिंग मेम्ब्रेन है वो रहेगा और जो नया डॉटर सेल वहाँ पर फॉर्म हुआ उसके पास वो न्यू एंडुलेटिंग मेम्ब्रेन भी फॉर्म करेगा और न्यू फ्लैजिलम भी वहाँ पे फॉर्म होगा ठीक है विच ग्रोस आउट बिफोर द कम्प्लीट सेपरेशन ऑफ द डॉटर सेल्स ठीक है जो पूरे कम्प्लीट बाइनरी फिशन होने से पहले ही उस डॉटर सेल में जो न्यू डॉटर सेल वहाँ पे फॉर्म हो रहा है उसमें वो डेवलप हो जाएगा ठीक है सो नाउ द मेन कोर्स द मेन टॉपिक दैट ऑफ आवर दैट इज द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ द ट्रिपेनोसोमा गैम्बियंसिस life cycle of trypanosoma gambiensis so i've already told you about the uh, life cycle that is the trypanosoma gambiensis is an endoparasite and mainly which type of endoparasite that is the digenetic endoparasite that is it completes its life cycle into two host one is the human or any vertib uh, in vertib uh, any vertebrate and second is the let's say fly so trypanosoma gambiens is a digenetic pathogen it passes its life cycle into two different hosts two vertebrate host and one invertebrate host okay so human or maybe any other uh, vertebrate then the second is the uh, let's say fly ठीक है ओके सो द प्राइमरी होस्ट और डिफिनेटिव होस्ट इन विच पेरासाइड लिव्स इनिशियली इन बुलेट द आउटसाइड द रेड ब्लड सेल्स लेटर ऑन पेरासाइड लिव इन सेल्फो स्पाइनल फ्लूड ऑफ द होस्ट दैट इज ह्यूमन बींग्स तो जो प्राइमरी होस्ट है वो है हमारा ह्यूमन बींग्स तो पहले वो मेनली ब्लड में देन लिम्फ में देन फाइनली इट रिजाइड्स इन द सेरेबो स्पाइनल फ्लूड then the reservoir host it has also a reservoir host in which parasite lives in the blood but causes no harm example domestic and wild animals such as pigs antelopes buffaloes and red pugs so it has also a reservoir host so it does not affect or does not cause any harm to the reservoir host but uh, it lives in that particular host if it does not uh, have any uh, definitive or primary host okay so it may be wild any uh, wild any wild animal or domestic animal like pigs buffaloes etc okay so these are the reservoir host in which 
the trypanosoma lives but it can it does not harm that particular reservoir host then the secondary host or intermediate host we can say that in which polymorphic forms of the parasite are developed that is blood sucking insect that is the sesefly or glossina palpenis and glossina tachinoids okay since sesefly carries the trypanosoma from person to person it is known as vector or carrier both male and female sesefly bite by daylight usually in the early morning and evening okay so both male and female are responsible for the spreading of this particular um, protozoa that is the trypanosoma gambiensis so it is the secondary host it is the primary host and these are the reservoir host so if we talk about the life cycle in human beings so i have already told you that it completes its life cycle in uh, primary host as well in the secondary host so we will see the life cycle of trypanosoma gambiensis in human beings so the first uh, stage is the infection okay so in this infective stage the trypanosoma exists in the salivary glands of the sesame fly and is called metacyclic form present in the salivary gland of sesame fly okay and mainly the this metacyclic form is also called trypo mastigot okay trypano uh, trypo mastigot uh, which i have already discussed uh, with you so when such infected fly bites a human being to suck his her blood it punctures the skin with its proboscis uh, which is a needle like mouth part it injects its saliva in the wound of human being to check blood clotting the saliva of sesame fly contains an anticoagulant the infective stage of trypanosoma enters human blood along with the saliva so when this sesame fly infect a human being so it transfer the infective stage of the protozoa that is the metacyclic form or trypanomastigot uh, inside the human body through its saliva because it releases the saliva because it contains anticoagulant anticoagulant which which prevents the coagulation of blood okay so during this release of saliva the metacyclic form also release it into the blood of the human and the trypanomastigot will enter in the blood of the human being so this is the infective stage or we can say there is a infection by the sesame fly okay then next is the multiplication so in multiplication uh, so when the trypanomastigot enters into the blood of the human the metacyclic forms changes into long slender flagellated form uh, uh, flagellated form this swim actively by beating their flagellum and multiply asexual asexually by longitudinal binary fission so this metacyclic form that is a trypanomastigot will uh, for changes into a long slender flagellated form long elongated flagellated form so this will swim actively by beating their flagellum and multiply asexually multiply asexually by longitudinal binary fission during this phase of life cycle parasite absorbs glucose 
from blood of the host and gets energy by an aerobic oxidation of food that is glycolysis up to this stage the mitochondria of each parasite has not developed cristi okay so um, first it will enters into the blood of the man then it starts multiplying and it changes its uh, metacyclic form into long slender elongated form then this uh, particular elongated form starts multiplication multiplication by uh, binary fission and uh, binary fission after binary fission this starts to absorb the nutrient present in the blood that is the glucose uh, glucose and gets the energy by anaerobic oxidation of the glucose that is the glycolysis okay up to this stage mitochondria of each parasite has not developed cristi so both have uh, mitochondria but those mitochondria does not have the cristi which is very important for the curb cycle okay so this is the second phase that is the multiplication then after multiplication that is the paleomorphism so the, thus the third stage is the paleomorphism so in uh, paleomorphism the blood of the host start developing antibodies against the multiplying cylinder form of trypanosoma so the human body start producing antibody against the long slender multiplying trypanosoma due to this antibody slender forms stop absorbing glucose and their glycolysis to stops Okay, so this antibody, when this antibody is formed in the human being, so this particular uh, trypanosoma, which is multiplying, it stops absorbing the glucose and also stops the glycolysis. So, in glycolysis, ruk jata hai. So, uh, ye, uh, glucose bhi, glucose ko absorb karna bhi ho. मतलब बंद कर देते हैं और glycolysis जोन में होता है, वो भी बंद कर देते हैं. और साथ साथ में जो multiplication है, by binary fission, वो भी uh, stop ho jata hai and they change into a short stumpy form they will change into short stumpy form uh, each of which lack free flagellum to short stumpy form mein wo convert ho jayega and it does not have a flagellum okay so during this transformation certain intermediate forms also appear they have shortened body and reduced free flagellum production of individual with slight variation in body form is called pleomorphism so this short uh, long elongated form se, wo finally jo short stumpy form that is uh, our uh, MST goat okay, which is the lechmanial stage it is converted to इस कन्वर्शन के टाइम पे वो डिफरेंट स्टेजेस के थ्रू दैट इज द अगर हम नॉर्मली uh, बोलेंगे तो प्रोमेस्टिगोड फॉर्म है एपिमेस्टिगोड फॉर्म है दैट इज द लेप्टोमोनाड स्टेज या सिट्रिडल स्टेज उसके थ्रू वो ट्रैवल uh, होके उनमें भी वो कन्वर्ट होगा लेप्टोमोनाड और सिट्रिडल है सिट्रिडल स्टेज उसके बाद वो फाइनली इस एमएसटिगोड uh, स्टेज में आएंगे दैट इज द सिट्रिडल स्टेज को हम epimestigod bolte hain theek hai epimestigod then jo maine aapko pehle discuss kiya to wo un different stages ke through uh, different stages ke through par ho ke finally wo short stumpy form mein uh, convert ho jayenge theek hai to is conversion ko that is from the long flagellated form to the short stumpy form it is called the pleomorphism kya bolte hain usko pleo morphism both the stumpy forms get their energy from aerobic oxidation of pyruvic acid which is the end product of the glycolysis ab ye jo ye short stumpy form hai to wo apna jo energy hai wo kahan se leta hai it consume its energy from the oxidation or hum we can simply say that the aerobic oxidation of the pyruvic acid jo unhone jo jo multiplicative phase mein jo unhone glucose use kiya tha theek hai to wahan pe pyruvate form hota hai us pyruvate ka kya hota hai us pyruvate ka yahan pe oxidative 
एरोबिक ऑक्सीडेशन होता है ठीक है तो उस ऑक्सीडेशन से वहाँ पे एनर्जी uh, प्रोड्यूस होती है देन दे यूज दैट एनर्जी फॉर देयर सर्वाइवल ओके सो देयर माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया डेवलप्स क्रिस्टी एंड प्रोड्यूस एनजाइम्स ऑफ कर्ब साइकिल द स्टम्पी आर सट बाय द सेसिव फ्लाई अलॉन्ग विद द ब्लड मील ओके सो तो जो ये ग्लाइकोलिसिस में ग्लाइकोलिसिस में जो पायरोड फॉर्म हुआ था वो पायरोड फिर एंटर करेगा कब साइकिल में क्योंकि अब जो ये शॉर्ट स्टम्पी है उनमें माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया डेवलप हो गए होते हैं और उस माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया में क्रिस्टी प्रेजेंट होते हैं ठीक है उस क्रिस्टी में जो कब साइकिल के एंजाइम से वो भी प्रेजेंट होंगे तो इस पायरोड का कन्वर्शन यहाँ पे कब साइकिल में होगा ये पायरोड कब साइकिल में एंटर होगा देन कब साइकिल में एंटर होने के बाद वहाँ पे बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ कब साइकिल एंड बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑक्सीटिव फॉस्फाइलेशन वहाँ से उस पायरोड से एनर्जी वो डिराइव करते हैं सो नाउ दिस शॉर्ट स्टम्पी फॉर्म इज एब्जॉर्ब बाय द और सक्ड बाय द सेसिफ्लाई ड्यूरिंग अ ब्लड मील So during a blood meal, this cephalai will suck the blood along with the uh, ovate leishmanial form. Here we can see the we can say the amestigot form. Amestigot form. Then uh, the fourth is the relapse of infection. Fourth process in the life cycle of human is the relapse of infection so in this stage some of the slender forms of trypanosoma are not metamorphosed okay so some of the elongated form do not metamorphosed into the short stumpy form to kuch wahan se escape kar jate hain wo metamorphosed nahi karte hain wo is short stumpy form mein develop nahi hote hain theek hai and they escape from the action of the host antibodies by changing the antigen which are present on their surface to wo kaise human host and jo antibodies se bachte hain wo जो एंटीजन वो प्रेजेंट करते थे उस एंटीजन को ही चेंज कर देते जैसे कि मलेरिया करता है ठीक है मलेरियल पैरासाइट करता है वैसे ही ये भी क्या करते हैं अपने जो एंटीजन से वो उसको चेंज कर देते हैं जिससे जो एंटीबॉडी प्रोड्यूस हुआ था वो उसको डिटेक्ट नहीं कर पाते ठीक है सो सच सिलेंडर फॉर्म्स सर्वाइव एंड कंटिन्यू टू मल्टीप्लाई एंड कॉज रिलैप्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शन तो वो सिलेंडर फॉर्म्स उस बॉडी में ब्लड में रहते हैं और अगेन वहाँ पे इन्फेक्शन्स का रिलैप्स कराता है ठीक है और वहाँ पे सर्वाइव करते हैं वो मल्टीप्लाई होते हैं और अगेन द इन्फेक्शन इज रिलैप्स इन अकर्ड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनिज्म तो यहाँ तक क्या था ट्रिपेनोसोमा गैम्बियंसिस का लाइफ साइकिल तक इसमें ह्यूमन में ठीक है होस्ट में तो आप इस डायग्राम में भी आप सिंपली देख सकते हैं सिंपली ये यू कैन सी ही है सो देखो लॉन्ग सिलेंडर फॉर्म सो देर इज अलिक साइकिलिक फॉर्म साइकिलिक फॉर्म दैट इज अ ट्रिपेनो मेस्टिकोड फॉर्म देन दिल विल एंटर इन टू द ब्लड वेयर इट मल्टीप्लीकेट एंड मल्टीप्लीके मल्टीप्लीकेट इन टू नंबर ऑफ मेच्योर ट्राइपो मेस्टिकोड देन फाइनली when the uh, human uh, immune system produces antibody then it will convert into the short stumpy form uh, by uh, moving from different uh, form which is called paleomorphism and finally the short stumpy form is formed and the sesi fly suck that particular uh, short stumpy form during a blood meal and some uh, stump uh, slender form escape from the antibody by changing the antigens of the cell uh, antigens and uh, they again multiply and they start again multiplying in the uh, human and causes the relapse of infection so now uh, the life cycle in sesi fly you can see in the in this diagram so in sesi fly first of all transfer to the sesi fly when the blood of an infected person or reservoir host is sucked up by a male or female sesi fly short and stumpy forms of the trypanosoma that is the uh, trypomastigot enters 
its uh, elementary canal along with the blood these exist in an unchanged form in the midgut for few hours okay so when it uh, sucks the blood of the human being so this uh, long slender form or we can say the short stumpy form will enter into the uh, sesame fly mainly in the elementary canal of the uh, uh, sesame fly while during a blood meal so uh, it resides in the midgut for few hours then after the second is the development in midgut after 10 to 15 day short stumpy forms develop into long slender forms so these forms passes into extra peritropic space a space between the peritropic membrane and the epithelial cells the slender forms multiply by longitudinal binary fission by 15 day they enter the lumen of the proventriculus okay so uh, 15 uh, Till 15 days, 15, 15 days until 15 days, they will stay in midgut without changing their structure. 15, 14 or 15 days after that, the slender is in short stumpy form and long slender form. Mein convert ho jate hai. Then, and these uh, form pass into extra periotropic space. So, after that, the extra periotropic space is there. That is the space between the periotropic membrane and the epithelial cells. Then, the slender form mein, it starts multiplying. It multiply starts by longitudinal binary fission. By 15 days, they enter the lumen of the proventriculus. Then, after that, it means that the uh, slavery glands are going to reach the On the 15 day. Then, development in the slavery glands. Now, the third is such a fly may that is the development the slavery gland the long slender forms then migrate uh, forward to the buccal cavity they pass on the hypopharynx and eventually reach the slavery glands through the opening of slavery drugs here they multiply and change their morphology first into epimastigot or we can say that the uh, uh, stage and then into metacyclic stage that is a short stumpy form of tripomastigot which are infective to human beings okay then pele yaha pe jane ke baad wo fir se stradal form mein convert hoga then stradal form will divide then finally this stradal form will convert into the short stumpy form or we can say uh, we can say the metacyclic form of trypomasty coat okay so th in this way the sesame fly completes its life cycle in the uh, uh, sorry the trypanosoma completes its life cycle in the sesame fly we can uh, also see in this diagram that how the this fly complete its life cycle so uh, the infective stage of the trypanosoma is the metacyclic trypano uh, tripomastigote form that is the infective stage which is present in the slavery glands of the tsetse fly so this metacyclic tripomastigot form which is the infective form it is transferred into the blood of the man when this tsetse fly bites the human then this metacyclic form will enters into the blood and after a few hours it is transformed into the long slender form or we can say that tropomastigot form then this long slender form will start multiplication by binary fission and uh, along with it i've already told you that it start absorbing the glucose from the blood then it is converted into the intermediate form then this intermediate form is converted into the short stumpy form then this short stumpy form will invade the bullet stream and uh, uh, along with that it will enter uh, some of the short stumpy forms will enter into the lymphatic system and through lymphatic system it will enter into the cerebrospinal fluid or spinal fluid into the brain uh, and effect, uh, affecting the uh, cerebrospinal fluid and causing the disease that is the sleeping sickness then this uh, short stumpy phase is absorbed by or uh, you know uh, transferred to the sesame fly when the sesame fly sucks a blood meal so this short stumpy form ingested by sesame fly during blood meal 
Then in the midguard of the sessifly, it divides into the long slender tripomastigote uh, where it's uh, starting multiply and migrate to the salivary gland and in the salivary gland it is further converted into the epimestigot form or cithridal form then finally this epimestigot multiply and develops into the metacyclic form which is again ready to infect a new uh, host that is the human being in this way the sessile fly completes its life cycle in the sessile fly uh, sorry, the trypanosoma completes its life cycle in the sessile fly as well as in the man. So now the pathogenicity and clinical features of this pathogen. So this uh, trypanosoma gambiensis causes a disease that is called uh, African trypanosomiasis, which is also called Western African sleeping sickness. So the illness is chronic and can persist for many years so in this condition the person will uh, you know uh, feel very lethargic and feel sleepy so this is the initial period uh, there is an initial period of peristemia following which parasite is localized predominantly in the lymph node so uh, a painless chantry that is a trypanosomal chantry appears on the skin at the site of bite by sessifly followed by intermittent so you can see a uh, like uh, appearance a uh, swelling at the uh, at the site of the bite which is called the chanchery or we can say that trypanosomal chanchery okay so systematic trypanosomiasis without central nervous system involvement is referred to as stage 1 disease okay so when these trypanosoma are present in the uh, lymphatic system or blood system so uh, that stage is called stage 1 disease in this stage there is hepato uh, sp uh, splenomegaly and lymph <laughs> lymph adenopathy that is the uh, swelling of the uh, liver and the swelling of the lymphatic system particularly in the posterior cervical region and uh, this is also called winter bottom sign then it also caused a fever that is called gambian fever which persists only for a few days and characterized by fever and severe headache, both of which recur at regular interval, accompanied by loss of nocturnal sleep, increasing weakness, loss of weight, and anemia. Okay. So there are also some hematological manifestations uh, seen in the stage first include anemia, that is the decreased uh, blood level then moderate leukocytosis that is the increase in the leukocyte that is the white platelets and uh, thrombocytopenia that is the decreased level of platelets or thrombocyte so these are some uh, clinical manifestation uh, seen in the stage first when the uh, parasite is present in the blood and in the limb okay so uh, you can see there is the winter's bottom sign that is the swelling of the uh, lymph nodes due to uh, due to the presence of the uh, protozoa or the parasite in that uh, posterior cervical lymph uh, lymphatic system okay <clears throat> then the, the stage second disease involves the invasion of the central nervous system with this the sleeping sickness starts okay when the parasites enter in the cerebrospinal fluid then the disease will start that is the sleeping sickness uh, this is marked by increasing headache mental dullness apathy and daytime sleepiness that is the loss of uh, enthusiasm a very lethargic feeling so uh, th this type of symptoms are seen in that particular uh, human which is infected by the uh, trypanosoma okay then finally there is infiltration of the brain and spinal cord and neuronal degeneration so this uh, trypanosoma will enter in the brain in a spinal cord in a spinal fluid and finally there is the neural uh, neuronal degeneration is occurred in that particular human being so abnormalities in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid include raised intracranial pressure okay uh, paleocytosis that is the increased level of um, 
thrombocytes or uh, thrombocytes no not thrombocytes sorry that is the white blood cells yeah, leukocytes in the brain and raise total protein concentration in the brain so this will cause uh, finally the patient into coma followed by that from asthenia asthenia is uh, low energy and low enthusiasm so th th this will cause the patient to die and finally the uh, patient will die due to the trypanosoma so th this is uh, this these are the disease character uh, these are the symptoms which are characterized by this disease there is a development of lethargic condition recurrence of fever loss of consciousness first regular interval and finally patient enters into a state of coma ending in death so this is the pathogenicity of uh, the particular trypanosoma gambiensis so this is all for today thank you